Hey everyone, I'm Reg and welcome back to my channel. I recently created an iOS shortcut that adds a new entry to an existing Notion database that I have. A couple of my friends on Instagram told me that they were very interested with how it is done and so here I am creating a video, hoping that this would be easy to follow along. I have something for you guys so make sure you stay until the end of the video. For context, I worked as a software analyst for six years, so I have background on coding. When the Notion API was released, I was beyond ecstatic because I knew it would be more flexible and possibilities for integrations would be endless. I have already tried it out since it was released and have been experimenting integrating it with some of the apps I use like Habitica. Remind me to edit that video and upload it one of these days. The most recent experiment was the iOS shortcut and the way I created it might not be as easy to understand for other people, but as I said, I'll try my best to make it easy as much as possible. Okay, so first things first. Before we get our hands on creating the actual iOS shortcut, there are a few things that you would need. The database ID that you would need to update, I'll expound on this later. Next is an API key, then the API URL for adding pages, I'll be providing it in the description box below, and the JSON payload or the structure of the database that you would need to update. First, the database ID. The database ID can be found in the URL when you're in the browser mode of Notion. If you visit the site that I included below, you'll see the sample where you can get the database ID. So this is assuming that the database you would want to be integrated with the shortcut is already existing. If not, please create it prior to this or else you'll end up making changes over and over again in the middle of doing this and we don't want that to happen. Trust me, I've been there. So before we proceed, for other people who don't know what a database is in Notion, Basically, it's any table, gallery, kanban, or list view that you can create. That's it. You just need to open it as a page to get the database ID. So it should look something like this. You have to copy that and keep it in your notes app or somewhere else where you might want to paste it. I swear, just copy or paste them there so you won't have to type them manually later on. I'm just going to copy this so you can see. Go to my notes, create a new node, and type shortcut info. Then I'm just going to type database ID and then just paste the database ID that I just copied. Next is to create an API key in Notion. A very helpful documentation for this is found in the link that I've already included below and the one that I'm showing you currently on screen. It has all the steps that you need to do to create one and all the documentation they have related to the API. So once you've familiarized yourself with the steps, you can go directly to this URL, which is the My Integrations. Make sure that you're logged in to Notion on your browser. So I'm just going to do that quickly. Don't worry, all the links mentioned in this video will be pasted in the description box below. So I'm just going to create one and let's call this iOS shortcuts demo. So you'll see which workspace is associated with it and I can just select submit. Okay, now that I've created an integration and I have to choose whether or not it should be internal or public. So I'll be choosing internal just for demo because most of the people really use the Notion API for private integrations as of now. So we'll stick to that. So now you'll have the token and you just need to copy that over to the same spot where you have your database ID. And then you go and save your changes. Once your changes are saved, we need to go back to the database page, click or tap on share and invite. Then this will give you a list of the integrations that you have created. And as you can see, the one we just created is now part of this list. Select that integration and make sure editing is enabled and then click invite. You'll be able to see this on the share section. 
The next is the API URL for adding pages and as mentioned, I've included it in the description box below and you can copy it to the API shortcut info node that you created so they're all in one place. So lastly, before we finally get our hands on creating the shortcut, you should be familiar with what the database structure is for adding new records in the database. This specific URL shows you what the structure is usually for different data types or different columns. Or if you're well versed with Postman, that's what I've been using, then you can also just do a get call to your database. Anyway, so I have that ready for us now with this code for my verse bank table. I'm going to share this page as a link so you can just copy this if you want the same table for your verse bank as well. Now, it seems like we have everything we need and we can now create the actual iOS shortcut. So for this use case, I'm just copying Bible verses from my Uversion app and then just paste it in the pop-up that you've seen earlier. You'll notice that I don't enter multiple times because they're already separated by a new line and are stored in different columns in my Notion table using a split function. I've included the links to the iOS shortcut that you can import and a template that you can duplicate if you want the verse bank in your own page. But if you would like to rename the fields or use a different table that's already existing, I suggest you stay and watch until the end. Now that we have everything we need and I've already explained what we're going to do, we're going to create the actual shortcut. Head on over to your iOS shortcut app and tap on the plus sign. Tap on Add Action, then search for Ask for Input. You'll see a box there and you would like for it to be text, so we'll just leave it that way. But for reference, you can ask for different data type or input type values. Tap on Prompt and add what the prompt should say when it asks for an input. So let's say I want to ask what's the verse of the day. If you want to know what that would look like, you can tap on the button below just click on that play button and you'll see a preview of what the pop-up would look like. For the next step, since we will be splitting the text that has three lines, we would need the split function. Tap add action again, search for split text, and then select. So you'll see that it's linked to the provided input above and you can change the separator to anything that is according to your inputted text. For mine, it's a new line, so we'll leave this as is. I would like to rename the provided input to VOTD, which stands for verse of the day, just so it would be a quick reference for me. So we now have that specific text split, but we don't have it stored to different placeholders yet. So what we can do is tap the add action again, search for get item from list, the first item as is and the source as well to split text. And we also need lines two and three since I'll always have three lines in the input. And I'm just going to get the item at index two and three respectively to get the values that I need for the columns still using the get item from list. It might not make sense right now, but I'm going to explain it later on. Now that's done, we can proceed to the date. I just would like to get the current date today so I can store it in the date column. So in order to do that, I just have to tap on the add action and search for date and then select. This just gives you the current date by default, and so you don't need to change it. I would also like to format the date though, so it doesn't give me the time. To do this, I need to search for Format Date, select, and then change the date format to ISO 8601. So this is where we'll be using the things that you pasted in your notes app earlier. Tap the Add Action again, search for Dictionary, and then select. Tap on Add New Item, and then we're going to enter the key DBID, which just stands for the database ID of the database that you'd be updating in Notion. Then we will just be pasting the database ID that is in the API shortcut info notes.
Tap the add new item again and then change the key to API URL and then paste the API URL for adding new pages. You can just copy it from below as well. Tap on the add new item again, change key to API key and in the text area type bearer space, then paste the API key that you have in your notes from your integration that you created earlier. Tap on add action, then search for the text feature and then paste the code that I shared earlier if you're going to use the verse bank as well. If you have your own JSON structure, use that instead. So this is where we'll be using the variables that we've set earlier in the action. Let's just go to the page I've linked below and just do a select all for the code and paste it in the text area in the iOS shortcut. If you scroll down, you'll see that the JSON text contains replace with database ID. Tap on that, delete it, then tap on variables and select dictionary. We're just going to rename this to API credentials. Select get value for key and then type dbid. This just replaces the value for this to whatever the value is in your dictionary, which makes it really flexible should you want to change it. If you scroll down, you'll see the name property, which is basically the name of the page. In this implementation, I created the current date, including time, as the name of the page that will be added so that I don't need to enter the name of the page anymore. So we're going to change that by tapping on date, deleting it, selecting variable, and then select date. Next up, we would need to change the values of the columns that we would like to update this time, depending on the text that was pasted in the input pop-up. So the new lines that were pasted, the first line is the verse text, second line is the verse, and the third line is the URL for U version. In order to access that, we would need to do the same thing. Tap on variables, but this time tap on select magic variable and then select the corresponding variables. So for the last column, which is the formatted date, we just need to tap on that, delete, tap on variables, and then select formatted date. And now our JSON payload should be ready. Don't worry, we're almost done. Second to the last, tap on add action, search for URL, and then tap and select variables and the API credentials. Change get value for key and then type API URL. And here's the last step, I promise. So we just need to tap add action again and then search for get contents of URL. Change the method to post and then we're going to add three headers. First is authorization, then for the value tap variables and API credentials. Change get value for key and then type API key. Add another header called content dash type and set it to application slash JSON. Add the last header called notion dash version and set it to 2021-08-16. So this video is clearly outdated because I recorded this on August 15th. And then you'll see your request body below Change it to file instead of JSON. Then choose variable, select magic variable, and then select the text that we updated earlier. And we're actually done. So let's test this out by tapping on the play button. Oh, hold on. Let me copy a Bible verse first. We can check the Notion database first and see that the last verse is different from the one that we copied. And so we're going to run this shortcut and then paste. Tap on done. 
The first time that you run the shortcut, a pop-up will come out asking for access. So just tap on OK and you'll see that there's a successful response below. Check the database and there you go, it's updated. So here's the announcement. As I know not everyone is well versed with programming and not everyone will have the patience to update this, I'm offering a giveaway of some sort because I'm really passionate about helping other people automate and optimize their workflows. I'll be choosing two people to help out, one on YouTube and one on Instagram to help them create their own shortcut for them. Meaning, I can help you update this shortcut or create a new one specifically for your own choice of an existing database in your Notion. All you need to do for YouTube is leave a comment below on what shortcut you plan to do and why do you think this will help your day-to-day -day process in using Notion. As for Instagram, I'll be posting the instructions there and I'll be choosing two winners randomly and will wait for you until September 15th. Well, there you go. I hope this video was helpful in a way, even if it sounded and looked a little bit complicated. If you want to watch out for my next videos, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications. I'd appreciate it if you'd like this video as well and leave a comment below for suggestions or anything you just want to let me know. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!